Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be cross compiling the Raspberry Pi kernel in the coolest way possible. So let's get started. Before I begin, I do want to announce that I partnered up with my friend for this new merch on imfyi.com. My friend just started a company recently more for self-expression on t-shirts like this. So he ended up designing something like this for me called I am hacking and it says till it hurts on the bottom. And I did see a lot of things that I wanted on that website. I also ended up getting my wife a hoodie that says I am cold. And yeah, it's basically self-expression and this is what she tells me all the time. And if you use the discount code down in the description below, you will get 10% off your purchase. So go check it out. Now, I've been compiling kernels a lot recently for the Raspberry Pi CM4 because I've been playing around with the PCIe interface and a lot of times the modules are not pre-compiled onto the Raspberry Pi kernel. So I've been recompiling a lot of the stuff recently. While everything is still fresh in my head, I want to do a quick little video on how I cross compile the Raspberry Pi kernel. And I'm going to be using the EDEX UI, which is a little terminal program I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. So that is still so cool every single time. Um, yeah, I, I can't get over it, but obviously it runs so much better on a desktop. This is my Ryzen 7 1700. So hopefully compiling the kernel will be quick as well. So uh, first thing I need to do is change over to my downloads directory. So cool. And uh, let's grab a terminal and I'm going to use a program called Browish. And it's a terminal based browser. And you can download the uh, binary so you don't even have to compile this. And I am going to go to google.com and search for Raspberry Pi kernel. And in here, I'm just going to go over to Raspberry Pi's website. And you can see it's so cool. This browser just converts the image of the website into like a ASCII image on your terminal. So this works really well hand in hand with um, edex uh, ui so in here it actually tells you like you need to down the kernel from here we're going to be doing some cross compiling so if i scroll down a little bit to the cross compile section i basically follow this mo most of the time up until uh, little changes that i would take that i won't follow di uh, directly so here uh, obviously i already got this installed so it's bison flex lib ssl all this stuff make, make sure you copy and paste this into your terminal same goes for this, the cross compiled essential. This you need as well, so definitely copy that. And we need to grab our library. So we needed to go from death equals one, GitHub, Raspberry Pi, Linux. So we're gonna grab that as well. So let me head over to the downloads and do uh, git clone, HT, nope, depth equals one, HTTPS, git hub.com slash raspberry pi slash linux that's going to grab the kernel and it's the current latest release uh, they do have the next release which is 5.10 which see uh, which is something i am actually using on the cm4 but this is so cool even downloading with the sound effects and this is downloading through my vpn so it's actually pretty good speeds seven i almost hit 10 before and it's hovering around seven megabytes, so it's pretty good. If you guys are not using VPNs, please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you wanna be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know, I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically. And having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content. Now, private internet access is basically worldwide. They have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries. And I'm not even saying this, with like some prompt or something like that. I just know this because I've been using them for so long. If you see my previous video, way back when, I think a year ago, they were only allowing five devices for one account. And now they upped that. They put 10 devices 
per account. So you could actually get more devices. They also support every operating system that's out there, which is Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Raspberry Pi, anything that you can think of, it will work on it. So you don't have to worry about that. They also have 24 hour support. So if you run into any issues and I actually have ze almost zero downtime. I mean, there are times where it's down and I know that they're doing upgrades, but it'll switch the server and I have no issue. And if you're using their desktop app, there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the VPN does go down. Another big thing about this company, why I chose to use it is because they have no logs. If I don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my ISP to know what I'm doing, I wouldn't want them to know either. So they have no logs whatsoever. It also allows for P2P. And if you guys don't know what that is, don't worry about it. My main usage scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so I could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the States. But yeah, you could do that with this as well. And best of all, if you're using the link down in the description below, you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee, you also get three free months. So really you have nothing to lose. All right, now that we have that, we're gonna change our directory over to Linux. And in here, we will have to export kernel equals kernel 7L. Next up, what we have to do is that command make arm arch cross compile and that's our cross compile library and that's the default config that we want for the raspberry pi 4 which is the bcm2711 once i hit enter it's going to grab the default configs for that and here's the thing that i see on the internet that a lot of people get wrong where they would actually just do make menu config and when they type this in um, they will actually have issues compiling the kernel the correct way to do it is actually make and then the cross compile arch arm cross compile this whole thing you need this in there and then you could do menu config and that will actually give you the this menu over here where you can add different kernels and stuff like that so i don't need to change anything i'm just going to keep everything as default but if i was to add stuff that's how you would do it mostly what i've been playing around with like is modules like graphic cards and stuff like that but yes this is where you need to uh change everything and that's where you would want to make your stuff but for now i already got the default configs i'm not editing anything or adding any modules so what i'm going to do next is this command with make this whole thing arch arm cross compile and here what they like to do is z image then dtbs and then modules all together in one line while that is efficient i find that i run into problems sometimes while doing that so i like to separate it so i would do z mod z image first and in front of make i would do dash j and how many cores you have or how many threads or cores you have so this is an eight core 16 thread i'm just going to use eight cores so i would use j8 once i hit enter on that that's it it's going to start compiling if it starts asking like a lot of weird questions like do you want to install this module and that that's where you got it wrong you need to redo it again that's the the missing step was the menu config that you kind of didn't put that little argument in there but now i'm just going to let it compile it should take about a few minutes i think All right, that only took like about three minutes to compile, which don't mind the time right now because I had to step away for a second. But yeah, that was pretty quick. And I love how when it was compiling and it had to switch directories, it would keep loading the file system on the bottom left. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Anyway, the next thing we need to do is I'm gonna hit up arrow for the previous command and we're gonna do DTBS. And that compiles super quick. You don't have to worry about it. Those are all the DT, uh, DTBs that we need for the raspberry pi image now the next thing is a big one which is modules so we would have to compile the same way and this one actually takes i think maybe seven to ten minutes on something like this on a eight core so definitely let this run for a little bit and when we're done i'm actually going to show you guys how to transfer it over to your raspberry pi at least the way i do it so this way we're not going to be actually following the same exact directions that the website have because they want you to transfer it to an SD card and for the CM4 there is no SD card and it's annoying to walk back and forth with it. Anyway, I'm gonna let this compile and let this run and I'll jump back into it when it's ready. Um, yeah, that was actually not too bad. It took only about six, five to six minutes to compile all the modules, which is three minutes for the kernel, 
about six minutes for the modules and like a minute for the DTBs. So we are basically done. We have all the files that we need compiled and now we are actually ready to transfer everything over to our Raspberry Pi. So what I ended up doing is creating something separate from what they are talking about. I'm gonna switch over to this directory and the main directory. So I'll just CD back to the root and make dir and I'll call this rpy kernel. Okay, so I'm gonna CD into rpy kernel and in there I'm gonna make two folders which is make dir boot and the other one will make itself later on the road. It's gonna be lib slash modules slash you know the kernel uh, file but we're gonna make boot. I'm gonna change over to boot and make dir called overlays. And now I should have two directories, uh, the boot directory that I created, and in there I have an overlays directory. Now, I have to transfer the kernel over there. So I would cd into arch arm boot, and in that you should have something called the z image. That's actually the kernel file. Now I'm gonna cp this over Z image over to that folder that we just created. So I'm going to do a squiggly line slash rpy kernel and then I'm going to put it into the boot folder and I'm going to call this kernel 7l because this is the Raspberry Pi 4. Then I'm going to name this img. So now that we transferred that over, we have to go over to dt dts and in here, even though there's a lot, we are looking for DTBs. Typo that, so it's star.dtb star. And there should be a handful of files. This should go into the boot folder itself. So I'm gonna cp star.dtb star over to squiggly line or tilde slash rpi kernel slash boot. And inside this DTS folder, there should be an overlays folder. And in here, we need to transfer files over to that overlays folder we created, which again is the same command, which we would do cp dtbs over to boot slash overlays. This way I don't have to retype everything. I just hit the up arrow and add to it. And there we have it. We should have stuff in the overlays here. Okay, the dtbos. And in here, we should have all the dtbs and the kernel image. So we are all set with this boot folder, okay? Next, we have to do the lib folder. So we're gonna head back over to here and I will change back to the main Linux root folder. Okay, so I just CD'd all the way back. And in here we would do the make modules, but instead here we would change, we would do install underscore mod underscore path, all capitals, and we would put this directory, home slash don slash rpi, or it's the same as tilde, and that's the folder where we want everything to move into. There's no subfolder after that. It's just rpi dash kernel, and then we're gonna do modules, or module, module install. I'm, on, I'm wondering if there's an S in there. I think there, I think there is, so I'm gonna add the S. So modules underscore install. And once you hit enter, it's gonna move all that stuff. Let me go to that bash. And it creates a new CD folder called lib. That's exactly how we want it. Now, before we transfer anything, we need to go into lib and then go into modules and go into the 5.4 kernel. And in here, there are two folders that we need to get rid of, which is build and source or it's gonna transfer all those over that we don't need. So rm build and rm source. And now that should be out of here. Next thing we need to do is now transfer everything over to our Raspberry Pi, exactly like how you would see it. So I'm gonna change over here and you see boot and lib. What we need to do is make sure that our Raspberry Pi has something to contain it. So I'm gonna SSH over to our Pi And yes. And in here, I want to make a new folder on the root directory called rpi kernel. Okay. 
And now I don't need to touch anything over here. I just need to make that folder so I know where to place it. Back into our terminal over here, we're gonna do sudo, uh, no, sorry, scp dash r, lowercase r. In cp, you use capital for recursive, but it's lowercase for scp. Here, period slash star, that means everything under this directory. And we're gonna move this over to pi, or copy this over to pi, 192.168.105.118, colon, and the folder that we need, which will be home, pi, slash r pi, dash kernel. And it's gonna transfer all these files over to the Raspberry Pi. Now, if I check my Raspberry Pi or Pi folder now, I should have boot and lib. And that's the new kernel, new files over at my Raspberry Pi. So what I have to do here is sudo cp dash capital R period slash star to the root folder. This will actually replace everything under the boot and replace the lib. It actually copies more files to it. Once you do that, now just to show you, this is uname-a, I am on 5.10 kernel. And what I just did here, and I transferred all the files over, it should be 5.4 because that's the kernel we just compiled. So I'm gonna reboot this guy over here. It's gonna close the connection, give it about like a couple of seconds and we'll pop back into it just to make sure the kernel changed to 5.4. And that is it. We updated the kernel, everything's moved over, modules moved over, everything that we need for cross compiling and updating the kernel for Raspberry Pi. All right, here we go. So if I was to SSH back into that Raspberry Pi, and I go into uname A, there you go, 5.4 kernel, and we have the fully new compiled kernel into our Raspberry Pi without having to use the SD card or anything. Anyway, um, I thought this was really cool and like I said since everything is still fresh in my head I'd rather do a video on this that way you guys could see how I do it and we're using a really cool terminal to do it as well Anyway, if you guys like content like this, please let me know down in the comments below And if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing also hitting that bell notification icon So you know when the next video is going to be out and as I say in my nerd cave Hack till it hurts